When it comes to vibrant cityscapes, they always have one thing in common, a multitude of high-rise buildings that take up as little square footage as possible. But what are the problems that commercial plumbers have to deal with when it comes to the design of these skyscrapers? And how on earth do they tackle it? Well, if you're interested in questions like these, stick around to see how high-rise plumbing really works. How do high-rise buildings fight gravity? Probably one of the biggest challenges that commercial plumbers deal with when it comes to the design of a complex high-rise is the question of gravity and what can be done to fight its effect. Remember, water reaches your apartment or household by traveling through a selection of pipes. But if you're living on the 20th floor of a building, it goes without saying that gravity is going to do everything possible to make sure that your shower gets as little water as possible. Essentially, this is nothing more than a pressure problem though. And as any plumber will tell you, pressure can be both a friend and a foe when it comes to the design of complex plumbing systems. In the case of a high rise though, commercial plumbers need to be aware that about one pound per square inch of pressure is lost for every 2.3 feet of elevation. Suffice to say, the higher you go, the less pressure you will have available to force water through the piping system and have it arrive on the 20th floor. So how do commercial plumbers deal with this problem? Well, as it turns out, the majority of plumbers use what is referred to as a pressure boost system in an effort to combat the loss of pressure due to the effect of gravity. But then we run into another complicated problem. Sure, adding a pressure booster may very well allow for the man on the 20th floor to receive an appropriate amount of water, but the woman on the first floor may be faced with a faucet that explodes each and every time she twists the nozzle on. Luckily for Mrs. Smith though, commercial plumbers have come to use pressure reducing valves to avoid pressure rising above its maximum levels. And as you can imagine, this ensures that the pressure on the lower floors is somewhat equivalent to the pressure on the higher floors, finding an equilibrium that even Thanos would be proud of. Gone are the days where water tanks had to be installed on the roofs of buildings so that the force of gravity could be utilized to reach the top floors. Now, commercial plumbers simply use direct pumping systems and a mixture of pressure controls so that each resident has a similar experience regardless of where they're living in the building. But that's far from the only problem that plumbers have to deal with when it comes to high-rise buildings. How does drainage come into play in these high-rise buildings? Now that we know that the pressure comes into play during the delivery of water to a high-rise building, the question that remains is how gravity might affect the pressure that needs to exit the system. Remember, one of the first things you learn as a plumbing apprentice is drainage theory which indicates that not only water, but large quantities of air move downward as the water exits the plumbing system in question. And it goes without saying, but this introduces a problem that is very much opposite of the one we dealt with earlier. While more pressure will be required to reach the top floors on a high-rise building, less pressure will be required to cause that water to exit these floors. In fact, the force of gravity now works in favor of the system, which has been rigged to get the used water from the top floors down to the bottom. That being said, gravity can cause this water Water to accelerate rather quickly, which brings a new set of problems to the commercial plumber hired to install a working system that eradicates them. And as we mentioned earlier, it's not just the water that can be seen traveling through these pipes. In fact, the water will have a tendency to stick to the walls of the pipes, causing a hollow funnel of air to be found at its center, similar to the eye of a storm. When the piping remains vertical, there's no real problem, with the combination of air and water being accelerated by gravity, but decelerated by friction. The problem occurs when there is a bend in in the system though, which when faced will have to deal with a full force of water and air that is about to hit it. Bends are necessary to slow the water and air traveling down the system though, as otherwise the woman on the first floor would come to experience a waterfall of sewage each and every time someone above her decided to flush the toilet. So how do commercial plumbers deal with this problematic aspect of the job? Well, quite easily actually. You see, there are a number of designs that allow for the further deceleration of water and air as it travels from the top to the bottom floor of a high-rise building. and these methods are definitely necessary due to the fact that the acceleration caused by gravity thoroughly outweighs the decelerating effect of friction. Yoke and relief vents, for example, are often stored throughout the system to slow the water and air combination so that it doesn't exceed the maximum pressure that can be handled by a bend in the system, which too has the effect of slowing the combination further. Commercial plumbers have also come to invent a range of restraining joints as well, which are used to reinforce the bends in the piping system and compensate for the strong pressures experienced by them. At at least this way the system is given a better chance of staying intact and resisting an eventual coupling failure down the line. But the amount of horizontal piping used in a system like this can also be quite problematic. Why do commercial plumbers stay away from horizontal piping? The design of a piping system always needs to fit the overall aesthetic of the billing that is employing it. And more often than not, plumbing engineers have to do so on a budget. This is why so many commercial plumbers would agree that although horizontal piping is important to reduce the overall pressure of the water and air leaving the system, 
aluminum, vertical piping is a lot more effective at doing the job. You see, vertical piping not only looks better than droves of horizontal piping, but requires fewer supports, hangers, and space to effectively give rise to the proper drainage of a high-rise building. So as useful as a horizontal drainage can be, it's also far more expensive than simply using vertical piping to do the same job. That being said, as we mentioned earlier, this brings with it its own set of problems. Ceiling penetrations, for example, will always be an issue in a vertical structure, which is why commercial plumbers will use a combination of horizontal and vertical piping. As you can imagine though, the less horizontal piping that is required, the better and less costly the system will be. How do commercial plumbers ensure the safety of residents? Last but not least, if densely populated countries like China and Hong Kong have taught us anything over the years, it's that high-rise buildings are prone to many dangers. One of these is no doubt fire hazards, which could effectively bring a building down along with all those who reside in it. This is why commercial plumbers have to do their best to install a fire protection system that, as you guessed it, runs on water and is fail-proof. Essentially, each system should have a range of sprinklers on each floor along with at least one standpipe system in each stairwell to restrict the spread of any flames. The great thing about a system like this is that it can make use of the same pressure boost and reduction methods we described earlier. And more often than not, these high-rise buildings come fitted with their very own fire pumps to provide the water flow and pressure required outside of the everyday system. At least this way, the fire system continues to work even after the original plumbing system has failed. And that being said, if you're already a plumber running your own business or just about to start and grow your own plumbing business, you must learn the four critical things plumbing business owners wish they had learned before starting a plumbing business so you don't make the same mistakes. Plumbing Accelerator have put together a free training video that you can watch right now that will show you exactly how to start, grow, and build your plumbing business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work, free up your time all whilst reducing stress levels and allowing you to have a sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you will also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth referrals, how to stop competing on price with other plumbers and escape your competition, how to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales, and how to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Make sure to click the link in the description and let us know what you thought about our explanation of plumbing in high-rise buildings in the comment section down below.